Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle, and today we're working on a monster reel. This one is at least a 9.0 size reel, and uh, it's brought to us by the friends at Fluger. So I did a little research on this. Uh, Brian, who is in uh, Long Island, and uh, he's one of the ones who connected me with Salt Strong, and I was able to do a podcast. Brian and I uh, talked a little bit. He works with a group of, uh, of middle school uh, children in a fishing club. And uh, we were able to, uh, to do some work together to uh, help out the club. And one of the things that uh, I swapped him for, for gear that could be uh, used in their environment, was this reel. This reel is a Fluger Templar. It's got an interesting uh, model number on it. It's got the 1420 and a half. Why somebody decided that they needed a half, I don't know. This reel was manufactured uh, beginning in 1934 through 1951. And from what little research I could find on the reel, this torpedo handle did not come in until 1937. So uh, this reel is somewhere between 1937 and 1951. So it's a big old dog. It's got the, uh, I love this, the old leather brake. And uh, it does have a, a, a star drag system on it. And uh, this one turns really tight. It does have a, uh, an anti-reverse, but for casting or drop fishing, you would always use that old leather brake and uh, kind of a, a testimony to its time. And it does have good old fashioned monofilament, probably 50, 50 pound test here, which is about what this reel would be used for. It, in the day, it would be used for shark fishing and the uh, like. And I can see I'm filling up the whole frame. I may just have to bulk this out a little bit just so everybody can see the size of this reel because it is massive. So I'm gonna, this one right, very sluggish, very hard to turn. I'm gonna bet it's just a bunch of dried grease in there. Uh, it doesn't seem like the free spool, well, it's uh, kind of working. Uh, before, when I had it off the table, it was spinning the handle. And uh, I did get started a little bit with uh, taking a few screws out, just so you don't sit and watch me take them all out here. But um, the reel itself seems to be in good condition. I don't know what kind of drag washers we have inside and if they're going to be replaceable. I'm not even sure what I'm going to do with this reel. It may just sit on a shelf. Uh, or maybe it'll uh, find somebody who really wants to consider this a treasure. Uh, I've also previewed for you earlier a, uh, an Ocean City Long Key Reel, which is about the same size. I have yet to take that one apart. Time hasn't permitted. But this one just happened to be sitting on my desk, and I thought, well, let's go ahead and get that one done. So, uh, so we're going to go ahead and take that apart. So while I'm doing that, I want to mention I do wear a protective glove on my hand to keep junk off, and I expect that there's going to be a lot of junk inside this wheel just because it's so sluggish. I do use a parch tray. My parch tray is nothing more than the bottom of a milk jug. You can see I've taken a few of those screws out already. It's a convenient place to put the screws and the pieces and the parts so that when you go to reinstall, um, you don't have any problem locating them. All right, I'm going to take the remaining screws out then. While I do, I want to thank our first responders. This week I had the opportunity to, um, to go and get the first dose of the vaccine. I uh, consider myself very fortunate. Uh, I guess when you get to a certain age, you qualify, and uh, we made our, made our way through the queues, and we were actually able to do that. But I really want to thank all of the folks that were there. This one happened to be done by a group from uh, the local hospital who was coordinating a super site. The local hospital is uh, Robert Woods Johnson. Uh, he's uh, kind of the heir to the Johnson & Johnson fortune, one of them, I guess. And uh, the hospital uh, is in New Brunswick, which is where the Johnson & Johnson headquarters are. At any rate, they're administering the super, super vaccination site, if that's the right words, uh, in New Jersey. And they did a great job, all of their staff. I want to particularly thank the National Guard who was there. Uh, checking everybody in and maintaining order, although it was a very orderly process. Uh, but they were doing a lot of the administrative tasks. The medical tasks were done by the, uh, the staff from the hospital. And then there was an extended group of volunteers, including EMTs and the like, that were working with you after the vaccination, make sure that you didn't have a reaction to it, scheduling your second doses and doing the other stuff on the back end. Thank you so much for what you did. I know I thanked you when I was there. I want to publicly thank everybody that's uh, involved, not only in that site, but anybody who's involved in uh, that vaccination work uh, group. Okay, so the screws are out. Big old uh, 
plate. I'm not sure if this is rubber or plastic. It's probably a plastic or a plastic derivative. And we should be able to pull that off now. Yep, we go. Oh, well, there you go. Well, there's a reason why it's sluggish. So this reel was maintained at some point. <laughs> and it's got a really thick varnished grease to it. So we're going to go clean that up. This is kind of interesting. So most of the time when we see a, um, uh, a pinion gear, what we will see is a uh, slot. And that slot will, will fit over the shoulders of a spool. I don't remember how big this reel is as I'm trying to work on it. It'll sit over shoulders on a spool and uh, that's how it will uh, merge to turn the, the spool. This one has indentations in it, in the spool itself. It has one, two, four, four kind of northeast, southwest. And then the, uh, the sleeve that fits over that, um, that pinion gear it's got two ramp studs on it that I'm sure are going to grab those those holes and nest in them. And uh, we have a yoke that's spring driven here. And uh, so the jack should move it in and out. And it moves it in and out. And I noticed it was very sluggish when, uh, when we started this. So uh, we're going to just go make sure that all gets cleaned up as well. Let's just take one more look, see what else is going on in the spool. This was very difficult to turn. Well, there you go. Uh, so I think the uh, the evidence speaks for itself, right? The uh, the spool seems to have been glued in there, and that would be a good reason why this thing probably isn't turning as well as it should. Also, an interesting design here in the click mechanism. So we've got two what looks like spring rods here coming up, nesting in the uh, the cavities of that dog or click tongue, and it looks like. Um, as you advance it, uh, it'll withdraw, and as you push it in, that's what the, uh, the back and forth movement should provide the click. Well, let's take care of this side first while we're at it. I'm just going to use a, a, a penetrating oil as a degreaser. I'll just go ahead and give that a nice coat. And then I'm going to use a paper towel to see how much of that I can get off with a paper towel. Now, I'm not restoring this wheel. I'm just trying to make this wheel work. But uh, there are folks, I'm sure, that might want to restore. And uh, I, I kind of get that question an awful lot uh, about repainting reels and uh, uh, kind of chroming them up and doing all kinds of stuff. And, and I kind of like to leave the reels as they are. Again, this reel at the latest was 1951, so I can do my math because I'm close enough in age. That that's 70 years old was the last time that this reel was produced. And uh, when you look at this reel and uh, think that it stood the test of time, well, I guess it needs a little beauty treatment every now and then, and that's kind of what we're going to give this one. But this reel would have been fished for a big game, whether it was uh, tuna or uh, shark in, the, in our area or uh, some of the... Uh, you know, marlins and things if it was down south, the marlins and the swordfish and the like. And I'm sure it was pretty much state of the art at the time. All right, so I got a lot of that stuff out just by using a paper towel and by using uh, a spray, which is just uh, penetrating oil. And it's nobody's fancy uh, penetrating oil. It just happens to be the store brand from the local hardware store, Ace Hardware. But uh, I don't, I don't find much difference in the properties of penetrating oil when I am using it as a cleaner. Uh, so I would recommend to you just make sure that, uh, that it's a penetrating oil. And don't use the penetrating oil as a general lubricant. I know it says lubricates, cleans, and acts as a, um, a rust preventative or all the other wonderful things that they say on the side here. Uh, stuff squeaks, loosens rusted parts, displaces moisture, inhibits corrosion. So it doesn't say there, use it as a fishing reel oil or grease, right? It gives you all those other properties. Use a fishing reel oil or grease when you go to do that. Okay, we have a burring in the back here, or at least we have an, an oil port. Uh, so we'll take care of oiling up that spool. Want to do the cleaning here as well. So you can see that this stuff is just kind of globbed on. It's been there a while and it's not doing anybody any good, so let's get it off of there. It's interesting how it's sitting here. It's almost in uh, uh, kind of an even distribution in a pentagram. 
uh, kind of a style. I don't know why it kind of wound up that way, but it did. And again, it's not doing anybody any good. And I use the disposable paper towels. I use that because I find that a shop rag, if I was using the shop rag, just tends to accumulate stuff from prior projects. And uh, when that happens, you go to do something and you've got somebody's old grease or broken pieces and parts and so on there. And do the same thing, just hose this down. We have another paper towel, and I know that uh, it sounds like I'm droning on here because it takes time to clean, but take your time, clean it up. And let's see this, uh, there's a little wiggle in this, but I'm not seeing it moving. I'm also not sure if we have a, uh, yeah we do, we have old grease in here in the slots. Q-tip works for that. Q-tip, that's the, that's the Johnson & Johnson variety. Uh, everybody else's is uh, a cotton swab. I don't know why I'm sensitive to that. I guess my daughter's in brand marketing, and uh, she always tells me you got to use the generic names. It's a cotton swab, not a, not a Q-tip, unless it's a Q-tip. In this case, it's not a Q-tip, so please duly noted. But uh, we're just using that to get into all the cracks and crevices. Look at the machining on that. Isn't that incredible? I just look at this. Here's something 70 years old. Beautiful gearing and machining. Made in the USA, real here. It's just kind of beautiful all around. It's a treasure. I have no question that when we get done with this thing, it's really going to going to work nicely. Just a little bit more. One more round on cleaning here, and uh, probably the last time I have to kind of fill some dead space here, but. Uh, if you like what you're seeing, if you like the, the notion of understanding how reels are made and like a little bit of the history of reels and like to see how reels are repaired, then um, I would ask you to subscribe to my channel. And if you do subscribe to my channel, please hit the notification button so that you don't miss any of the, uh, the episodes that I do. I don't just do reel repair. Uh, a lot of folks have noticed in the, the last several months now, I've started doing things like the, a series on the business of fishing. Uh, we've also looked at some reports in terms of how uh, how they do the demographics when they're marketing to the fishing community. Uh, we've looked a little bit about uh, the types of fishing, and uh, we do some product reviews every now and then. Not many, but uh, we do some product reviews as well. So if you like all or any of that stuff, please subscribe and hit notifications. You're going to find uh, that uh, the diversity of the, the programs and the like that I do. Uh, might just suit what you're looking for. So and to those of you that have subscribed, I thank you all. Your subscriptions are helping me build my channel. All right, we're going to take the outer parts off now. I started, I loosened that screw before. I don't know, I don't have Superman hands. We're going to take the, uh, the handle off next. Look the size of that handle, right? What are we, an eighth of an inch thick in steel? A torpedo handle that after uh, seven years is still working. Kind of amazing. All right, we'll take this star. This looks like a sheriff's badge. Take the, the star drag off. That's the only part I'm worried about with this reel is um, if it does need drag washers, how are we going to make them? Because I'm sure they're not available any longer. That's a beautiful piece of equipment there. Okay, that's off. We can tell that we have the, uh, uh, the hold down tag for the, the drag washers is incorporated right into the uh, the star adjuster. We'll just clean that up, put that in our parts tray. All right, we have four bridge screws. We have two screws here. I'm not quite sure if I need to, to remove this. There's nothing going on back there. You may just be able to get through with the cleaning. So if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, if you if you'd like to see something in terms of a, uh, a video and maybe you didn't find it in my library or maybe my library doesn't have it, uh, then, then go ahead, ask that in the comments section. If you have a, um, a problem, maybe you're working on a reel and for whatever reason uh, you can't get through a particular thing, then uh, by all means uh, leave the question or the problem in that comment section. If I can help you, I will. I work on all kinds of reels. I work on spinning, bait casting, round uh, bait casting, low profile bait casting. I work on 
plenty of salt water reels, this one included, but uh, everything from the mundane to the somewhat exotic. I work on the star drags, I work on the lever drags, and all of them generally make it to video because I started about two years ago deciding that as I was working on these I might as well uh, pass what I know along to other folks so that uh, they can work on their reels as well. And that's what we're doing. I'm taking these off and I'm laying these out on my, my desk. I want to make sure that all of these screws are the same size. And if they're not the same size, I just want to make a note where they came from so that uh, when I go to replace them, I know where to go. All right, we should just about be able to get this out now. Got that out. I don't know, I'm not seeing drag washers. That's pretty interesting. We have just total mess. That's about the only way you can describe this. A total mess here underneath with this black grease. There's no question that that's the cause of the hard to wind. And I think we have some dry washers possibly in the cavity here. I have to go do a little bit of work on that. And then I'm going to spray that down, let that loosen up. And spray this down, let that loosen up. And uh, we had talked a little bit about the, uh, the questions, leaving the questions. I would also say that um, if you like the video, please indicate that. And finally, if you have a reel that uh, needs repair and you're not actually interested in the repairing so much as the other things we were talking about as you're watching this, then uh, contact me on the information on the business card that follows, and I'll be happy to provide you with the information on how to get your reels repaired as well. If you uh, like to do that, the business card will follow the video. Okay, so we're cleaning this up. It's not all terrible black grease. Some of that happens to be the back end of this uh, this case here. But there was a lot in there and I have no question that that's kind of what's slogging this down. And then there's a pile of grease here as well. Let's see if we can get this gear out. We can't. Okay, it looks like these screws are stuck in here. And I'm not going to force the issue at this point. There's no need to. The uh, the, the spring and everything is working. It does leave me a little bit of a quandary here in terms of cleaning that pinion gear. So what I'm going to do here as I go turn my attention to the other side is I'm going to spray that one more time with a heavy dose of the uh, penetrating oil. I'm going to let that sit and we'll come back to that. All right, let's see if we can figure out what's going on with this main gear now. I do believe I have some kind of a a drag washer underneath here. It looks like a cap washer kind of a setup. I like to use a utility knife, see if we can get in there and if we can reach that. Okay, we're skipping ahead a little bit because it was time intensive and I didn't want to uh, spend all the time uh, working this. I was able to remove the main gear the main gear has a drag washer on each side, and surprisingly, these drag washers are still good enough. Um, so let's, uh, let's just move those over. Now I want to take off the main drive. There's a screw that should be holding the pinion with a gear sleeve in place. So let's take that out. That'll enable us to clean underneath, or it should enable us to clean underneath. I'm kind of flying blind here, as they say. There's my screw. Let's see if we can pull this off. We can pull this off now. Look at that. So that's the second answer as to why this thing is, is working the way it is completely uh, and totally caked with grease. So I'm going to go ahead and scrape that off. My utility knife should work well with that. Wow. This gives a new meaning to like a butter through uh, and like a knife through butter, right? This is grease. It's supposed to be like that. But it is. So you didn't miss much. 
in terms of taking it off, but I will review that on reassembly. But again, I don't want these videos running an hour uh, just because I'm doing my general house cleaning, if you will. I would much prefer to, to show you the critical parts. So one of the things you need to understand and do if you're going to tackle an old, tackle an old reel like this and you don't have the schematics and you're not even quite sure what you're going to find when you open it up, is take pictures along the way. And I've done that here with a, uh, with a video camera. And if I get stuck trying to figure out where a piece or a part went and don't want to rely all on my memory, it's not that good. Uh, just come on back and um, look at your pictures on your video, look at your pictures on your cell phone. All of those uh, become invaluable in uh, retracing your steps. I really encourage you to do that. Okay, these are the, the little slots for the uh, anti-reverse. They're all cleaned up. The back end of the gear is cleaned up. If you uh, were a little bit concerned, you can take some steel wool at this point and then just buff it out there. So this is a single piece, it appears. It looks like this is pressed in there, the, uh, the axle shaft. It has a backing plate, which serves as the, uh, the resistance for the one washer. And uh, then it sits the main gear over that. And it uh, looks like we got a little bit of an issue here with the junk that's accumulated with this anti-reverse dog as well. So let's get that out. Imagine if it's on one side, it's on the other. This was some dried green grease. Not sure what the stuff is. There's two little springs that are holding this the tension on it. There's a coil spring here and a coil spring here. I'm just trying to avoid knocking them off at the moment. I'm not as brave as I used to be, I guess. And uh, I'm just going to use the cotton swab to clean up the rest of that. Overall, it's just an incredibly over-engineered reel. And uh, as I mentioned, it stood the test of time. Okay, here's the, uh, this ought to be the fun part. We want to take some, some grease and reapply to that shaft. Do that. It's a generation from now when somebody's opening up this reel again, they will uh, tell me that uh, whoever did it the last time, right? I'm going to just slide this over and then I think it's a matter of just kind of working both sides of this in terms of pulling those anti-reverse dogs out so that they can see. I'm just going to use my uh, mini screwdrivers to do that. Yep, they've seated. Give it a spin. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Talk about the difference, difference maker. Now we can put the screw back in for this. And now you, you'll see, you'll, you'll appreciate some of the stuff I did to get it to this point on the, uh, in the program. We'll go ahead and we'll put that uh, main gear back. Seems like I needed all my tools for this. And we have those two drag washers and they're still flexible thank goodness I would uh, these are gonna work it would be a little bit uh, I think I could probably get away with a pen drag washer of some description or if I needed to I would go back and uh, make new but in this case looks like we're good there We probably should seat it this way. So it goes in the back end of the, the main gear. This gear I remember from doing this had an, uh, an up slot to it, so uh, I want to make sure that that sits up when I do that. I also can take my time now, go ahead and grease the main gear. There's no grease in this one. Let's go ahead and get that done. If there was old dried grease like the other one, you would use a um, 
some of the tools that we just used there, some kind of a pick or otherwise to kind of work your way out of that. We have another one that's fine. I'm just going to put a little grease onto it. It's a leather drag. Put that back in. And this cap went up on this one. And then, interestingly enough, there's a little screw hole in here somewhere. I got to go find that. Actually, I got to go find the screw hole before I find that because that's what that notch is going to sit over. I did take advantage of my parts tray to put that small screw in there just because that's one that you can lose. And if you lose it, you're going to have a little bit of trouble getting this one back. And then there's a hole here that that screw. And that screw's got flat sides on it, so you got to kind of match it to it. It's almost acting as a keyway here, and then you want to get this over the screw. Like that. And that's your drag stack. All right. Now we can just reverse the process, but before we do, I mentioned I'm uh, cheating a little bit here. My reel, I guess I'm allowed to cheat. This is working fine now. This has all been greased up, lubed, all the old uh, oils and greases are off of that. I do have a problem with needing to get the grease onto the pinion or spool gear. I'm going to do that and then I'm just going to turn it just to make sure I got it in all of it. And that, that'll act fine. All right, now we're going to just replace the main gear onto there. And rebuild the reel. I have no doubt that this reel is going to work nicely. I'm just looking down here, we still this grease is everywhere. And despite best efforts, there still seem to be some that remains. All right, I'll go ahead and pull that up, pull this over, seat it just like that. There you go, you want to make sure. That you're flush to the case. Mine over on this side. We know that the four screws that we took out here are all the same, so they can go in any position. And if this is dragging on, I don't apologize. One of the things that you need to learn when you're doing wheel repair is that you need a lot of patience. It's sometimes it's just not add water and get the instant rice kind of a thing. You do need to work at this. And uh, sometimes, especially on the older stuff, you do need to pay attention to it. And you do need to make sure that uh, you take care of those pieces and parts because they're invaluable. Try to find another reel like this that may have those parts. Uh, it's going to be a challenge. But uh, in this case, I'm not sure what the destiny of this reel is going to be. Whether it's going to sit on a shelf somewhere or somebody's going to want to take it fishing or whatever the case may be. But I can say that it will be ready to go fishing, and uh, it's a fine example of the reel of the time. Okay, getting back down to it now. We're going to take the spool that we've cleaned up. This line is going to come off, but that reel was so so packed with grease that it was, I was unable to remove the line before servicing. This line will come off, but I'm going to use the real chassis as a way to to uh, stabilize this and go ahead and make uh, the plans for that. We're going to get the grease on both sides of the spool shaft. Let's get the spool in. There's a harness lug here getting in the way. Those of you that watch the channel know how much I do not like working on reels with line, but uh, the way it goes. All right, take the main piece, put that back on. Need to line up the holes because there's a little indentation that they sit in. I noticed that on the way out. It took a little while, didn't it? Okay, put that in. Let's go ahead and put those screws back. And I think what we'll probably do is uh, edit some of this out because it's been long. And putting six of these screws in is going to be a while. Okay, so we're back. I guess I have to thin them out a little bit here. 
Uh, we're down to the last screw. And uh, sometimes I show my age, but like they used to say, through the magic of television, we're on the last screw. Uh, yeah, I know. I say stay tuned. Nobody tunes anything anymore. Yeah, it's life. All right, just tying them up. I want to make sure that the screws on the back side are, are tight. This one loosened up. And then we're going to give this thing uh, the, the final outward pieces, and we're going to give it a test. And I have no, nothing but confidence that this wheel is going to, to perform beautifully. And uh, again, it can sit on a shelf. If somebody wants to take a fish, and we'll talk a little bit about trying to find a substitute drag washer. But uh, in the meantime, I'm not terribly worried about that. Let's get this. You know, get the Sheriff's Star Badge back on. Before we do that, there's even a little bit of grease in here that, uh, that dried up. There we go. Let's get this back on. Wow, seriously. That's some badge. Use a, a ratchet to open this up. This is a hex nut. You could use a screwdriver. So we'll use the hex nut to bring that down. Let's see what we got. We're in the on position. Let's move it to off. Oh yeah, look at that. We're spinning freely. Didn't expect anything other than that. Move it on. Boy, that's a that's a noise maker, isn't it? Wow. Let's tighten up the one side. You know what? Nice reel. Make sure that the drag is holding. holding. There you go, that last turn holds the reel. So there you go. Wow, that's a noise maker. And I don't know what she, this clicker maybe. There you go, with the clicker. <laughs> now all you got is the anti reverse dog knocking. Wow. Some adventure, Satan. <laughs> I want to say thank you to all of you that stayed around for this one. This one was quite a quite a beast. Okay then, that was the final cut and paste. I took the line off, just as I recommend everybody do on an annual service. This line had to go. We know how old the grease was inside this reel, and uh, I don't think the line was quite that old, but uh, it was old, and you don't want to risk putting a reel back into uh, into service with old line that could. Uh, break or crack. So this is it. There it is. This is your Fluger Templar 1420 and a half. What a beautiful reel. If the noise you're hearing is that anti-reverse dog. Look at that spin. Nice true and even 70 years later. 70 years plus later. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, again, please like it. I know I said this about half an hour ago, but if you uh, like this kind of thing, please subscribe. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. So with that, I'm going to wish you all a great day. And uh, please stay safe, stay vigilant, stay protected against uh, this, SAR, uh, this COVID. And uh, we will get through this together. So thanks for watching.